everybody. Welcome to Erndale's. My name is Dale and this is my channel where I talk about all my crafting things, my gardening things, and things of life that interest me or that are happening to me. Welcome. I'm so happy to be back. It's been a couple of weeks. I had um, kind of a busy week last week going back and forth to medical appointments about my eye. And um, good news is my eye is improving. My vision is back pretty much to where it was and the eye is stable. I'm not going to have a torn retina anytime soon, apparently, unless I do something really stupid. So I was talking to the specialist about doing crafts and, you know, I mean, a lot of what I do is really close up work and maybe strainful for the eye. And he said, as long as my vision is fine, I can do that kind of stuff. I'm just not supposed to have uh, what he said was don't go riding on a horse and have this kind of motion going on in your head or blows to your head or things where there's going to be a sudden movement of your eyeball or your head causing pressure on the back of your eye so um, I'm good to go so I have been stitching and knitting and doing all the things that um, I love to do and it makes me feel so much better you know us crafters, we have to be doing the things we love, don't we? So sitting around and just kind of, you know, when I couldn't see, when when my eye was full of all this stuff and I really couldn't see very much, it, it was very, I don't like the word depressing, but it was depressing. So I'm feeling much better now. I can do the things I love to do. So I am going to jump right into what I've been up to. I have finished quite a few things, actually. Um... And the first thing that I finished is that piece of red work slash cross stitch that I started. I think I started this in 2021 at the end of the year. And I went great guns with it for a while. And then I put it aside and then I would sort of pick it up. I always had it on my stitching table, but I always had it covered up with stuff. And um, last week I got it out and I looked at it and I thought, you know, Dale, Really? You only have a border at the bottom to finish? Get it done. So I spent the better part of last week finishing it up. And I finished it actually not until Monday. And um, what a relief to get it done. And I'm so happy with the outcome. So I'll show it to you here. And then I'll I'll do a little separate video of a close-up of it. Because it's it's really a beautiful piece. So here it is, all done. Now, it is a combination of cross stitch and red work. And I'll, I'll, do a, I'll do a better little video about it. But it's actually, um, it, it, I, I got it from 123 Stitch and it was a kit. So everything came with it. And, um, I wasn't, at first I thought, you know, it's on 14 count data. I'm not really sure I want to do something like this, but you really, I have to tell you, 14 count ADA was even a chore on some of this red work. It is tiny. Like, for instance, look at this part here. Some of the stitches, I think if you did this on linen, you would go blind. So that is my finished piece. I'm going to now send it off to uh, a framer because... I really don't know where I would find a frame, a square frame like this. It's kind of an oddball size. And I really don't think I want to have it framed in anything too busy. It's busy enough on its own, but it's a delightful piece. There are hearts like crazy in here. There are crosses like crazy. There's three cats, a, a rooster, two angels, and a million hearts. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, I'm very happy to have this one completely finished. So while I'm on this piece, I'm just going to say that I'm going to gift the pattern away because I'm not going to do that piece ever again. So I have the kit minus the kit, but I have the pattern. And so what I'm going to do is if you would like to do this pattern, of course, you're going to have to find you're going to have to buy your your ADA or whatever you want to kit it, do it on. And 
this the thread for this is a variegated red and hold on i'll just go and get it and show it to you because i have two skeins left over so it's it's a variegated red thread it's not dmc or anything because this kit is actually from russia so um that was one thing that i really liked about this piece is that you didn't have to change your thread it just whatever you pulled is what you did and so i don't know i can't tell you what number this would be you would have to find if you wanted to do it in this red variegation color you would have to find the equivalent to dmc or whatever kind of thread you use in this variegated red but i, I don't think that would be too hard to do it's it's actually a very nice thread it's very silky um so i've got two skeins left to do something else with you could actually do that piece in black too do it like a black work piece or in, in any any color really but I do love the red. I think it turned out really well. So if you want this pattern, if you'd like to do this pattern, um, I will send it to you. So just put in my in the comments on this video, um, red work. Some, in your comments somewhere, just put the word red work. And I will pass this beautiful pattern on to you and um, you can enjoy doing it is a really lovely stitch I have to say I really would like to do another piece of this type of stitching now um, I'm itching to do a red sampler a real red sampler and I actually um, I have one in mind well actually I have two in mind but I I don't know which one I'm going to pick I think I might do I subscribe to um, an online magazine they were clearing out the whole thing and I bought them and there's a red sampler in there and I don't know what the name is but the next time I do a video I'm, I'll have that information for you it is beautiful sample red sampler and I think I might do that one but yeah so if you would like this pattern um I would be happy to send it to you just put red work is that what I said red work um, in the comments below and I will draw that in a couple of weeks for you so that was one thing that I finished and the other I did some knitting too I remember I had started um, some small little socks for myself well I finished this pair they are not matchy matchy at all the yarn that I used is um, one of those it's a large it was a large skein it's actually more a dk weight this yarn it is a sock yarn but it's a dk weight and it's sort of like that variegated yarn it is what it is so i finished these little socks for myself and i like socks this length i do not like a long sock for myself i find it get way too warm it's fine in the winter time but um these are kind of my preferred and i did a, a really s small change on these ones this is a socky pattern and usually the the um the rib starts like right down here but i i gave it a little bit i did a little bit of plain uh, knitting in here just to give it a little bit more so this is more like a like a bobby sock actually so i did these ones and i actually finished one sock um i have cast on the second one these are for uh, a niece up in the Yukon she requested a pair of socks so these are for her so I have one more sock of these to do and then I've got two more socks to make for gifts uh, soon so I will once I finish this pair I will start on the next pair and I think for knitting right now that's all I'm going to do is just socks because as time progresses and we get closer to spring, I'm not going to be starting any big projects of any kind, really. I decided that from now until gardening time, I'm going to, I'll knit socks. I can start socks and finish those, you know, that doesn't take long. And I'm going to work on stitching projects that are close to being finished. I have so many of them and um, that'll get me up to gardening time and then no big projects until fall that's sort of what i've told myself so i'm going to insert here uh, a close-up of the the sampler and uh, i'll come right back to you
One of the other stitching things that I have been working on is my um, knitting bag. I was making this out of a pair of, I think I actually think these were blue jean shorts. They weren't pants. And so what I've been working on is Chip, my little Chip, my bird. I've been stitching him and it's going okay. It's, it's a slow process because I'm having to make it sort of look like feathers and I'm trying to I'm trying to be very careful of my coloring because his colors change so much like he's he's green at the back but then he has blue under his wings and then he has yellow, a little piece of yellow at his chest like this and then um, it goes down into a red piece here and then back to green so He's very variegated, and so I'm trying to make that look right. And it's it's difficult actually doing that kind of variegating, you know, with thread on blue jean material. Actually, it's hard to stitch on blue jean material. It's very tough, and I've got a really, I've got a, an old-fashioned embroidery needle that's a really thick one and a really strong point on it. So, um... If I lose that needle, I'm really sunk. But this is coming along. Um, it's not a project that I'm thinking that it's gonna be finished anytime soon. I still have the whole back to do. I've got a barn drawn out there. But um, this is just a, when you don't have anything else that you wanna do kind of stitch. That's what this is. And all the things on here, I decided when I started this, I would just stitch the things I love. So, um, you know, I love flowers. I love playing the piano. Um, this would have been our dog, Molly, and friends and family. And then um, uh, Gary and Dale, that's, I love my husband, you know, and, and our son, John, he's up in the pocket here. I haven't stitched him. so. Anything that comes to mind that I love, I'm putting on here on both sides. And then at some point, I will line it and turn it into a knitting bag. That That's sort of where it's going whenever it gets going. And then um, I have to address another thing today. It is almost the end of February, and it is almost time for me to move along the Turkish spindle, the traveling spindle. So... I have not been really successful with this, and I don't know if it's, well, I do know why, but partially it's because I really couldn't see what I was doing when I was playing around with this thing. But the other reason is, is because I'm a very poor drafter, and I had the same problem when I had my spinning wheel. I always spun wire because I can't seem to... I can draft, you know, I can take this fiber and I can draft it out really fine, but I can't seem to do it while I'm spinning. I don't know why. It's a mental block that I have. And it seems like when I have something spinning, I forget to draft or I get to a situation like this where it's so tight that it won't draft, you know? So um, this is all I have actually spun is that tiny little bit on there. And now it's time for me to move this on. So this little spindle is um, a Turkish spindle and it comes apart. And if you would like to have a chance to play around with this spindle for a month or so, I want you to please contact me. Um, you can leave me a message below or you can uh, leave a message on my email or you can message me on Instagram and all that information is below this video um, and I will send it on to you so the, the spindle comes with the spindle and I'll take it apart to show you but um, there's also it comes with with some roving and um, I made a little journal for it because we're keeping track of where it goes and um, it's it's inexpensive to send and I'll show you why. So I'm just gonna take my little effort off here. And um, 
it comes apart in three pieces, so it's it's cheap to send. Okay, got my yarn off. So it comes apart like this. So you can send it in a flat envelope. Um, this roving is, you can send that flat too. And this little book is flat. So you could send this very cheaply in a flat envelope. So if you want to try this spindle out, before I go into that, the spindle started in the Yukon, White Horse Yukon, with Brittany from Crux Fibers. This is hers. And she had the idea to um, get this spindle. It's actually one that's made on a 3D printer. She had the idea to get the spindle going and just let it travel wherever it goes. And so you, if you want the spindle, you request it and it comes to your house. You, you keep it, you play with it, you, you know, spin yarn or try to spin yarn in my case. And, um, and then when your time is up, you move it on to whoever wants it next. And you don't have to have a YouTube channel to do this. Um, you can, you can, you know, if you know somebody who might want that, you can call them up and say, do you want this? Because it's going to leave my house soon. You don't have to have a YouTube channel. You don't have to be on Instagram. Um, you just have to have people who might want to move it along. And if you don't, if, if, if you don't have anybody to move it along, um, Brittany is always, you can send it back to Brittany in White Horse because she will always take it back. I'm sure she has a list of people who would like it. So if you want to try out the spindle, put a message to me here on a comment or like I said, email me. My email is in the description below or send me a message on Instagram and I will send it out to you and you can try this pretty little spindle for a time being. I didn't have... Uh, much luck with it but again like I said I'm, I'm not making excuses but it actually came to me at a poor time because my eye went all and I couldn't even see what I was doing at the beginning so there that's the second little thing that I'm going to share with you and um one more thing I got to show you so I started my little greenhouse up and things are just starting to come through. There's a little, little bit of things starting to poke through here and there. We haven't had a lot of sun and so it hasn't been terribly warm in here, but there are some things coming up. These are all perennials, so they take quite a bit of time to come out. So yeah, this has been very nice. I need to give them a little bit of a spray, I think, of some water. Close this up. It's a nice sunny day today. So this is my experimental stuff. And other than the calendula, nothing really has come up in here. This is from seed that I saved from several years ago. So I just I kept this separate. And obviously some of the seeds might not come up. I'm expecting... It just tells me which seeds are good and which aren't of the old ones that I found in my packet. So that's a good thing to do. I've got them separate from all these. These are all new seeds. So hopefully they'll all come up and grow and I can get them out of here before the beginning of April because that's when I'm going to start my um, my annuals. I will. These will all be potted up into regular pots and moved somewhere else. And then I'll start my April seeds in here for vegetables and stuff like that. So this is making me feel like spring is not too far away. So that's it for this week. Thank you so much for coming along with me. Uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy these videos. And um, everybody stay healthy and stay warm. Well, if you live where I'm living, um, for sure you have to stay warm. It's like in the minus 30 degrees Celsius here right at the moment. It's terribly, terribly cold. And I know there's really bad storms in the States and, you know, the weather's kind of really nutty right now. So stay healthy, stay warm, and um, I will see you again next week. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.